Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 29, and I'm going to discuss the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, this theorem, from the outset, is very important. You can't really do anything after this unless you understand the fundamental theorem of calculus. And if you're like me, when this was shown to you the first time, for example, in a calculus class or something like that, you would have just said, yeah, that makes perfect sense, and you would have moved on. But I'm going to tell you that if you don't understand it, at some point a manipulation will be made where somebody will imply or invoke the fundamental theorem of calculus and you'll be wondering how come they could do that, not, not really f fully understanding the power of the fundamental theorem. So let's say, let's say for argument's sake we're talking about a, just a, a function, we'll say y is a function of x, but it's only a function of one variable, so a, a function of x. So the fundamental theorem of calculus states that if you were to go from A to B along a path which you can integrate, so obviously you're moving in infinitesimal steps, then the df dx in one variable, okay, integrated dx, is equal to the function valued at the end point minus the function value at the start point. Okay? Now, there is a second way of writing this function, or writing this, uh, the, this fundamental theorem, and it is as follows. If we, once again, move along the path from A to B. This time we integrate another function, let's say capital F of X, and we integrate it dx. So that's going to be the value of small f at B minus the value of small f at A. Now what are A and B? A is equal to the, the start, and B is equal to end. And these are both points, of course, they're points in space. So, now what does this mean? So, in order to integrate, let's say, a function, let's say I want to integrate the function capital F of x, the way I do this is I somehow come up with another function, small f of x, where the relationship between small f and big F is that if I differentiate the small f with respect to x, I get back the big F. So if I can do that, I can invoke the fundamental theorem and simply evaluate the, small, the new function small f at the, 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 bound, the boundary points like this. And that is the same as, as integrating the capital F of x. So the fundamental theorem tells you how to integrate, integrate capital of f, f of x. You think of a function small f of x whose derivative is equal to capital F. So the basic format of the, fun, of the fundamental theorem is as follows. The integral of a derivative over an interval, in this case a to b, is given by the value of the function at the end points. Okay, so we'll often use this form here, but this form is often very good. And when we talk about integration by parts, it's in this particular format that we will be we will be using in many respects. So, what is the geometrical interpretation of this? Well, if you were to plot this, what would it look like? Well, if you think about it, let's say there's my y-axis and there is my x-axis. Okay, there's my x and there is my y. And I don't know, let's say my function is doing, I don't know, let's say it's a line. It doesn't really matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be a line, but let's say it's a line. So, this point here is f of a. This point here, we'll say, is f of b. And it's called y. Okay, so there, there's x is equal to a. And let's say here x is equal to b. So in order to do the integral, I'm sure you've all seen it, okay, so we, we do a, we compute a Riemann sum. But the way we do it is we chop we chop our interval up into these these uh, small lengths. Lengths of course of uh, of dx. That's that's the length. So we'll say from the theory that I've covered now in blue is dx. So we chop it up into intervals of dx, and we compute the value of, we'll say, y, y, which is f of x. And basically, we, we do that the whole way along, and what we'll find is that we may as well not have done, done any of the chopping up. We may as well just have found the value here, the value here, and taken their, their difference, and that's the same thing. So that should make perfect sense to you. Note, by the way, that df dx dx. Well, you might ask yourself, well, what is this? This is the infinitesimal change in f when you go from x to x plus dx. So, what I'm going to do here is just note something. 
and this is very important. Let's say you have another function, let's say you have capital G. And capital G is a function of, I don't know, let's say capital G is a function of A, it's a function of B, and it's a function of C. How do you find the infinitesimal change in G? Well, the infinitesimal change in G, now notice there's three variables, so it's going to be partial derivatives. It's going to be as follows. It's going to be del G, del A, dA, plus del G, del B, dB, plus del G, del C, dC. Okay, and that is the total derivative, or the total infinitesimal change in capital G. Now, you ask yourself, does this make sense? Of course, because this is the rate of change of G with respect to A, and there, this is how much you move in the A direction. So, if you multiply the total together, together, we get the change in G. This is the infinitesimal change in G with respect to B. If holding everything else fixed, fixed this is the change you move in B. So, their product, of course, gives the change in G due to a change in B. And similarly, get, get something similar, of course, with the C variable. So, you can extend that to an infinite number of variables, no problem. And this is the same thing here in one particular variable. All right? So, that's all I've got to say about that. So the point about the fundamental theorem is you're able to go, you have your derivative, your derivative of your function, but you're able to evaluate it simply at the endpoints, or just to write it in the other way I had a moment ago. Notice, by the way, it's small f and capital F. So they're two different functions. One is the derivative of the other function, and that is the fundamental theorem of calculus. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com.